Lesson 11. Managing in Tough Times. Sabbath Afternoon, March 11. It is not the will of God that His people should be weighed down with care. But our Lord does not deceive us. He does not say to us, do not fear, there are no dangers in your path. He knows there are trials and dangers, and He deals with us plainly. He does not propose to take His people out of a world of sin and evil, but He points them to a never-failing refuge. That I May Know Him, page 225. God knows our wants and has provided for them. The Lord has a treasure house of supplies for His children and can give them what they need under all circumstances. Then why do we not trust Him? He has made precious promises to His children on condition of faithful obedience to His precepts. There is not a burden but He can remove, no darkness but He can dispel, no weakness but He can change to power, no fears but He can calm, no worthy aspiration but He can guide and justify. That I May Know Him, page 224. Often when placed in a trying situation, we doubt that the Spirit of God has been leading us. But it was the Spirit's leading that brought Jesus into the wilderness to be tempted by Satan. When God brings us into trial, He has a purpose to accomplish for our good. Jesus did not presume on God's promises by going unbidden into temptation, neither did He give up to despondency when temptation came upon Him. Nor should we. God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. He says, Offer unto God thanksgiving, and pay thy vows unto the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee, and thou shalt glorify me. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and... Psalm 50, verses 14 and 15. The Desire of Ages, page 126. When trials arise that seem unexplainable, we should not allow our peace to be spoiled. However unjustly we may be treated, let not passion arise. By indulging a spirit of retaliation, we injure ourselves. We destroy our own confidence in God and grieve the Holy Spirit. There is by our side a witness, a heavenly messenger, who will lift up for us a standard against the enemy. He will shut us in with the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness. Beyond this, Satan cannot penetrate. He cannot pass this shield of holy light. While the world is progressing in wickedness, none of us need flatter ourselves that we shall have no difficulties. But it is these very difficulties that bring us into the audience chamber of the Most High we may seek counsel of one who is infinite in wisdom. The Lord says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. Psalm 50, verse 15. He invites us to present to him our perplexities and necessities and our need of divine help. He bids us be instant in prayer. As soon as difficulties arise, we are to offer to him our sincere, earnest petitions. By our importunate prayers, we give evidence of our strong confidence in God. The sense of our need leads us to pray earnestly, and our Heavenly Father is moved by our supplications. Christ's Object Lessons, pages 171 and 172. Sunday, March 12. Putting God First Jehoshaphat was a man of courage and valor. For years he had been strengthening his armies and his fortified cities. He was well prepared to meet almost any foe. Yet in this crisis he put not his trust in the arm of flesh. Not by disciplined armies and fenced cities, but by a living faith in the God of Israel could he hope to gain the victory over these heathen who boasted of their power to humble Judah in the eyes of the nations. With confidence, Jehoshaphat could say to the Lord, 
Our eyes are upon thee. For years he had taught the people to trust in the one who in past ages had so often interposed to save his chosen ones from utter destruction. And now, when the kingdom was in peril, Jehoshaphat did not stand alone. All Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Unitedly they fasted and prayed, Unitedly they besought the Lord to put their enemies to confusion, that the name of Jehovah might be glorified. God was the strength of Judah in this crisis, and He is the strength of His people today. We are not to trust in princes or to set men in the place of God. We are to remember that human beings are fallible and erring, and that He who has all power is our strong tower of defense. In every emergency, we are to feel that the battle is His. His resources are limitless, and apparent impossibilities will make the victory all the greater. Conflict and Courage, page 217 When we fasten our minds upon the misrepresentations of Satan, we dishonor God by mistrusting Him and by murmuring against Him. When we act like culprits under sentence of death, we bear false witness against God. The Father gave His only begotten and well-beloved Son to die for us, and in so doing He placed great honor upon humanity, for in Christ the link that was broken through sin was reunited and man again connected with heaven. You who doubt the mercy of God, look at the Lamb of God, look at the man of sorrows who bore your grief and suffered for your sin. He is your friend. He died on the cross because He loved you. He is touched with the feeling of your infirmities and bears you up before the throne. In view of His unspeakable love, should not hope, love, and gratitude be cherished in your heart? Should not gladness fill your service to God? That I may know Him, page 224. The promise itself is of no value unless I fully believe that he that has made the promise is abundantly able to fulfill and infinite in power to do all that he has said. We cannot dishonor God more than in distrusting his word. Feeling is not at all reliable. A religion fed and kept alive by emotions is valueless. God's word is the foundation upon which our hopes may safely rest, and in the confidence we have in the word of God, we are established, strengthened, settled, riveted to the eternal rock. This Day with God, page 156. Monday, March 13. Trust God, not your own resources. David in his prosperity did not preserve that humility of character and trust in God which characterized the earlier part of his life. He looked upon the accessions to the kingdom with pride and contrasted their then prosperous condition with their few numbers and little strength when he ascended the throne, taking glory to himself. He gratified his ambitious feelings in yielding to the temptations of the devil to number Israel, that he might compare their former weakness to their then prosperous state under his rule. This was displeasing to God, and contrary to his express command. It would lead Israel to rely upon their strength of numbers instead of the living God. The work of numbering Israel is not fully completed before David feels convicted that he has committed a great sin against God. He sees his error and humbles himself before God, confessing his great sin and foolishly numbering the people. But his repentance came too late. The word had already gone forth from the Lord to his faithful prophet to carry a message to David and offer him his choice of punishments for his transgression. David still shows that he has confidence in God. He chooses to fall into the hands of a merciful God rather than be left to the cruel mercies of wicked men. Spiritual Gifts, Volume 4a, page 92 By his own example, the Savior has shown that his followers can be in the world and yet not of the world. 
He came not to partake of its delusive pleasures, to be swayed by its customs, and to follow its practices, but to do his Father's will, to seek and save the lost. With this object before him, the Christian may stand uncontaminated in any surroundings. Whatever his station or circumstances, exalted or humble, he will manifest the power of true religion in the faithful performance of duty. Not in freedom from trial, but in the midst of it is Christian character developed. Exposure to rebuffs and opposition leads the follower of Christ to greater watchfulness and more earnest prayer to the mighty Helper. Severe trial endured by the grace of God develops patience, vigilance, fortitude, and a deep and abiding trust in God. It is the triumph of the Christian faith that it enables its followers to suffer and be strong, to submit and thus to conquer, to be killed all the day long and yet to live, to bear the cross and thus to win the crown of glory. The Acts of the Apostles, page 467. If you go to God for help and wisdom, he will never disappoint your faith. It may be argued that the Lord gives special wisdom to those entrusted with important responsibilities. True, if they walk humbly with Him, He will give them help for their work, and He will give you help for yours if you seek it in the same spirit. If the Lord in His providence has placed important responsibilities upon you, He will fit you to bear these burdens if you go to Him in faith for strength to do this. When you put your trust in Him and depend upon His counsel, He will not leave you to your own finite judgment to make imperfect plans and decided failures. Gospel Workers, pages 417 and 418. Tuesday, March 14. Time to simplify? Men are putting afar off the coming of the Lord. They laugh at warnings. The proud boast is made, all things continue as they were from the beginning. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 4. Everything in the world is in agitation. The signs of the times are ominous. Coming events cast their shadows before. The Spirit of God is withdrawing from the earth, and calamity follows calamity by sea and by land. There are tempests, earthquakes, fires, floods, murders of every grade. Who can read the future? Where is security? Solemnly there come to us down through the centuries the warning words of our Lord from the Mount of Olives, Take heed to yourselves lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. The Desire of Ages, pages 635 and 636. The obligations resting upon us are not small. Our sense of dependence will drive us closer to God and our sense of duty to be performed will summon us to effort combined with our earnest prayers, works, faith, and continual prayer. Power! Power! Our great cry is for power without measure. It awaits us. We have only to draw, to take God at His word, to act faith, to stand firmly upon the promises, to wrestle for the endowment of the grace of God. Learning is not essential. Genius is not necessary. Eloquence may be lacking, but the prayer of the lowly and contrite heart God hears, and when He hears, no obstacles on earth can hinder. The power of God will make us effectual. This Day with God, page 187. Do we believe with all the heart that Christ is soon coming and that we are now having the last message of mercy that is ever to be given to a guilty world? Is our example what it should be? Do we, by our lives and holy conversation, show to those around us that we are looking for the glorious appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who shall change these vile bodies and fashion them like unto His glorious body? I fear that we do not believe and realize these things as we should. 
Angels are watching over and guarding us. We often grieve these angels by indulging in trifling conversation, jesting, and joking, and also by sinking down into a careless, stupid state. Although we may now and then make an effort for the victory and obtain it, yet if we do not keep it, but sink down into the same careless and different state, unable to endure temptations and resist the enemy, we do not endure the trial of our faith that is more precious than gold. We are not suffering for Christ's sake and glorying in tribulation. There is a great lack of Christian fortitude and serving God from principle. We should seek to honor and glorify God, and in all we do and say, to have an eye single to His glory. Early Writings, page 111. Wednesday, March 15. Priorities Christ's call to sacrifice and unreserved surrender means crucifixion of self. In order to obey this call, we must have unquestioning faith in Him as the perfect example, and we must have a clear realization that we are to represent Him to the world. Those who work for Christ are to work in His lines. They are to live His life. His call to unreserved surrender is to be to them supreme. They are to allow no earthly tie or interest to prevent them from giving Him the homage of their hearts and the service of their lives. Earnestly and untiringly, they are to labor with God to save perishing souls from the power of the tempter. Those who are thus connected with Christ learn constantly of Him, passing through the successive stages of progress in Christian experience. Difficulty and perplexity come to them that they may learn more perfectly the will and way of Christ. But they pray and believe, and by exercise, their faith increases. The Upward Look, page 235. The life of the Christian is not all smooth. He has stern conflicts to meet. Severe temptations assail him. The flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. The nearer we come to the close of this earth's history, the more delusive and ensnaring will be the attacks of the enemy. His attacks will grow fiercer and more frequent. Those who resist light and truth will become more hardened and unimpressible and more bitter against those who love God and keep His commandments. The influence of the Holy Spirit is the life of Christ in the soul. We do not see Christ and speak to Him, but His Holy Spirit is just as near us in one place as in another. It works in and through everyone who receives Christ. Those who know the indwelling of the Spirit reveal the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 6, page 1111. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Colossians chapter 3, verses 2-4 to four. We need to have a broader view of the Savior as Lord and Christ. All power is given to him to give to those who claim to believe in his name. We do not half acknowledge his right to our homage and obedience and to our increasing faith in him. Put yourself under discipline to Christ. Be led by his word. Heed his instruction. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Matthew chapter 11 verse 29. I beseech the churches in every place to make thorough work for eternity by confession and putting away of sins. His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. By what means? We all with open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. This Day with God, page 290. Thursday, 
March 16. When no one can buy or sell. The point is fast being reached when the iniquity of transgressors will be to the full. God gives nations a certain time of probation. He sends light and evidence that, if received, will save them. But if refused as the Jews refused light, indignation and punishment will fall upon them. If men refuse to be benefited and choose darkness rather than light, they will reap the results of their choice. Behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. The professed Christian world is advancing, as did the Jewish nation, from one degree of sinfulness to a greater degree, refusing warning after warning and rejecting a thus saith the Lord while crediting the fables of men. The Lord God will soon arise in his wrath and pour out his judgments upon those who are repeating the sins of the inhabitants of the Noachic world. The fact that God had long forbearance, patience, and mercy, the fact that his judgments have been long delayed, will not make the punishment any less severe when it does come. Ellen G. White comments in the SDA Bible Commentary, Volume 4, page 1143. Often the follower of Christ is brought where he cannot serve God and carry forward his worldly enterprises. Perhaps it appears that obedience to some plain requirement of God will cut off his means of support. When we learn the power of his word, we shall not follow the suggestions of Satan in order to obtain food or to save our lives. Our only questions will be, what is God's command and what his promise? Knowing these, we shall obey the one and trust the other. In the last great conflict of the controversy with Satan, those who are loyal to God will see every earthly support cut off. Because they refuse to break his law in obedience to earthly powers, they will be forbidden to buy or sell. It will finally be decreed that they shall be put to death. See Revelation chapter 13 verses 11 to 17. But to the obedient is given the promise, he shall dwell on high, his place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks, bread shall be given him, his waters shall be sure. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 16. By this promise, the children of God will live. The Desire of Ages, page 121. Courage, fortitude, faith, and implicit trust in God's power to save do not come in a moment. These heavenly graces are acquired by the experience of years. By a life of holy endeavor and firm adherence to the right, the children of God were sealing their destiny. Beset with temptations without number, they knew they must resist firmly or be conquered. They felt that they had a great work to do, and at any hour they might be called to lay off their armor. And should they come to the close of life with their work undone, it would be an eternal loss. They eagerly accepted the light from heaven, as did the first disciples from the lips of Jesus. When those early Christians were exiled to mountains and deserts, when left in dungeons to die with hunger, cold, and torture, when martyrdom seemed the only way out of their distress, they rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for Christ, who was crucified for them. Their worthy example will be a comfort and encouragement to the people of God who will be brought into the time of trouble such as never was. Testimonies for the Church, Volume 5, page 213. For further reading, Lift Him Up, The Atonement, Our Foundation of Peace, page 332. And... This Day with God, Separating from Sin, page 94.